Welcome back. Time for another virtual astrophysics lesson. For the beginning, Schumann Resonance Monitor, on which we can see coupled powerful bursts which took place one after another and are still taking place when I'm recording this movie. Just like before, we can see that there was another enormous cosmic ray which was probably the cause of those disturbances. This can probably mean that Earth moved out from the protection zone of the heliosphere and we will be influenced again by those anomalies. It can be as well connected with the recent ACE solar wind readings because it looks that we are hit recently by something what looks like a coronal hole stream. However, the impact was rather weak and it didn't cause almost any disturbances. So I would rather bet for the cosmic rays. Why? Because at the time when the spike appeared on this chart, another unusual quake took place. It was a 4.7 magnitude in Egypt. That's a second quake there in last week. Look at all those disturbances at Schumann Resonance Monitor. It is known that those frequencies can affect our bodies. Maybe it is the reason why in last three days I felt absolutely exhausted and wasn't able to do anything. Some people are saying that those bursts are caused by the sun, but my opinion is different. I think that the sun is affected by those disturbances just as our planet is. What means that there has to be another source of those enormous cosmic rays. On this image we can see how badly the magnetic polarity of our star is screwed up. There are two positive poles which are placed on the solar equator while the rest is covered by the negative polarity. Coming back to the anomalies which were visible lately on SOHO images, this is why I don't believe that they were showing real objects. When we compare it with the images from 1998, we'll notice that they look exactly the same. There is no way that some physical bodies would appear just like this only on a single frame and disappear soon after, especially when the same thing happened 16 years ago. Now some good info. SWMF monitors are back online. I wonder for how long. I would like to thank Mr. MBB333 for his latest video, in which he confirms the existence of a neutron star closely to Leo and Sexans constellations. By coincidence, this is the location from which I've started to build up my 3D model. Now it has been confirmed by NASA. Does it mean anything good for us? Not really. Compared to a neutron star, a brown dwarf, which for a long time was a main suspect of all the recent anomalies, looks like a small kitty standing next to a tiger or liger. And I'm not talking about the physical size, but about the strength of electromagnetic field. And I agree with Mr. MBB333. This object is probably much closer than 4,000 light years from Earth. Now I would like to talk a little bit about D5 UNCR, who appears to be my private debunker. In the difference to other people who disprove all the false claims which we can see on YouTube, 
This guy not only hunts for all my mistakes, which I can make in my movies, but he even tries to convince me to make the false statements, so he can debunk them later. He obviously doesn't care about other channels on which we can hear that the latest Soho anomalies were caused by Planet X or Nibiru. He doesn't care that I didn't say nothing about such things. Instead, he tries to force me to make mistakes. Quite a strange behavior for a debunker, don't you think? But now I will debunk the debunker. One of his favorite claims is the one that the seismic activity of Earth doesn't change at all, and the number of earthquakes is not growing even a bit. This is the graph which he is using to co confirm his claims. He calls bogus all the graphs which are disproving his claims. Funny, because in the difference to his graph, all the bogus charts show exactly what is the source of data which was used to make them. Notice that those two images, which come from two different sources, show exactly the same things. Those bogus charts have to be made by professionals. Anyway, he advised me to check the number of earthquakes and compare them to those graphs. Of course, I did exactly as he told me. I will give you the link to this page, so you will be able to compare the numbers with the graphs. I can say only that the graphs which I've shown you, a couple minutes earlier, are absolutely correct. It looks that the USGS data has to be absolutely bogus. But while we're talking about the seismic activity, let's look at the latest 5.9 quake in Alaska, which took place at 10.54 UTC on 25th of July. By another coincidence, there was a strong geomagnetic disturbance which was recorded by Canadian magnetometer stations soon before the quake. It was pretty strong. The jolt reached minus 200, 200 nano teslas. And it was recorded only in stations placed in some distance from the northern pole. So this impulse wasn't probably caused by the sun. But it looks that around this time there was another strong outburst of cosmic rays. I would love to find some connection with the SWMF plus RCM readings, but it looks that just before the quake, those monitors went through some kind of reset, and those readings can't be trusted. Thankfully, the ionosphere monitors are working just fine. Maybe some of you remember that in last two episodes, I recorded the increase of neutral gas temperature above the epicenters of quakes a couple hours before they took place. Let's look if my observations are correct.
Well, it's up to you to make some conclusions. But let's look at the HMF2 monitor. Hmm, it looks that we have another coincidence. Someone will have to count how many times I'm using this word in each of my movie. But the best readings can be seen on MACC side. This is the carbon monoxide monitor, which shows the surface level. Although the biggest emission is placed at some distance from the epicenter, I really doubt that is not connected with the quake. And this image shows the total column of carbon monoxide. Currently, there is no bigger emission on the planet. The same situation is visible on the nitrogen oxides monitor. As on the surface, so in the total column mode. Formaldehyde shows the same thing. Just as sulfur dioxide. It looks that the Bartles Cosmic Ray page started to update at last their monitors. And guess what? It looks that the outburst which can be connected with the latest Alaska quake, is visible clearly here as well. It's time to look at the new annual monitors. In the difference to their previous versions, those ones show much bigger part of the solar system, till 5.5 AU, so they include the orbit of Jupiter. Although the last image is from March 2014, I will show you the animation as we can see a huge amount of anomalies which appear on the edge of the ecliptic plane. This one was pretty spectacular.
that's the last image. If you are looking for a confirmation that this entire solar system is being influenced by an outer force, you won't find better source of data. For the end, couple words for BP Earthwatch, who recorded those strange waves on stereo ahead HI1 images. I will be honest, I have no idea what caused them and what can it mean. However, I can tell you a couple things. Those disturbances were not recorded on any other monitors, including the ground observatories. They appeared on stereo data only twice, on 19th of July. So they can't be connected with the Schumann resonance bursts, which can be seen much more often. And at last, they can't be connected with the sprites and dark lightnings which are caused by the discharges of positive particles into the space where they leave the magnetosphere as plasma bubbles or plasmoids. What can be seen on the SWMF monitors almost every day? So, if you are looking for the explanation of the sprites, I would suggest to watch those monitors carefully. And with this statement, I will finish this episode. Class dismissed. Peace.